Next up, we have the Knight of Wands. Whoops. I don't recognize this place. Describe it. It looks like someone's office. It could be out of some old film noir movie. Maybe this is where I met the detective, Merriman. Merriman? You found his card at your parents' house. Yeah, card is a key word. And the first word for Merriman's gotta be... hat. I'm sorry about that. I should have, you know, read... I wanted to read that, but I didn't get the chance because I clicked on the thing. But essentially it says there's someone that's trying to do what's right, etc, etc, etc. But they're a little bit dangerous. A little bit reckless and dangerous, even though they have good intentions. That type of thing. Oh well. Anyway, we're left with hat, and we're left with card. And you are about to see a very... well... You're about to see the first example, I believe it's the first example, of words that belong to more than one keyword in trick. Because it belongs to both hat and card trick. It'll fill up a space from both of them with one click. It lands in trick there and there. Yeah, sometimes that's nice, but some it feels kind of useless, actually. They could have just cut a square off of one. But, you know... That's nitpicking. Anyway, the other things we're looking for, because, you know, hat, we can't just have one thing there, we can have more. Here's a bowling pin for a hat pin. And then a hat has a band in it, even if that was rubber. And of course, there is a hat check. And gardeners everywhere love their sun hats. Yeah, now I remember the first time I met Merriman, the P.I. His office is in Essex, just up the coast from Boston. It's a long way from my parents, but it feels like something's drawing me there. Sure, I can help you track down your parents. I'm just curious why you'd drive, what, four hours to come and see me? Why not just hire a P.I. in their neck of the woods up in New York? Well, they have one of your business cards. There must be a reason why. I pass out a lot of cards. There's one other thing. I don't know if it has anything to do with my parents' disappearance, but I just found out I was born near here. I was adopted, and for some reason, my parents didn't want me to know that. Well, that is a coincidence. Or maybe not. You want to know how much I charge before I get started? Money's not an issue. Time is. Another coincidence. I got lots of time and no money. <laughs> So with that, you see the obvious nods to their former creation in Tex Murphy. Being that one of his signatures was a fedora hat. And he's even voiced by Chris Jones. So, let's see what card has waiting for us. That new look birthday card. Yeah, that looks like one of the big tarot cards. There's a postcard. And here's what I'm talking about. You see how that puzzle has lit up? This puzzle cannot be played until everything else in the current chapter has been completed. So, well. Well, gold card. And here's a score for a score card. A little clock for a time card. What do I got left? I got two left. Yeah, a punch card. Now, what else? Yeah, let's see. Ah, the table. That's right, the table. The card. Table. I'm remembering something, but it must happen later on. We have a key card to a motel room, and there's something really bad inside. Maybe you should stay here. Why? What is it? How bad could it be? It's not good. Let me see. Oh my god. What is it, Jess? I remember now. Merriman said it looked like someone had been tortured. In the hotel room, nonetheless, huh? 
Chapter 2 After Merriman was hired by Jess to find out what happened to her parents, his investigation turned up some information about Jess's birth father, Devin Tellis. Maybe it was connected to Ben and Lila's disappearance. Merriman picks up some Chinese takeout and invites Jess to his office to see what he's found. But before they can see the evidence, they'll need to solve a puzzle. Not half bad. No, huh? it's all bad. <laughs> More for me. So what have you got there? Did I mention that my father was a cop? He investigated pretty much every big crime in this county for over 40 years. This hard drive has backups of all of his case files. You think there's something in there about my parents? Oh, I know there is. But not the parents you're thinking of. Your real parents. And I don't think you're going to like it. That's never a good sign when the P.I. says... My dad was a big like blackjack it. player. He must have had someone set this up to be his password protection. I'm guessing we need to play some 21 to get past it. And 21 it is. For the instructions, click, drag, and drop the nine cards into the nine slots. Arrange them until each column and row adds up to 21. So the diagonals don't matter, but across and uh, horizontally and vertically. And of course, aces are worth 1 or 11. King and Queen are worth 10, and all the other cards are worth their number value. But this is actually a pretty easy puzzle. Once you know, kind of, once you've done it once or twice, this type of puzzle is actually fairly easy. Once you see the patterns, anyway. And I do believe an even ace here, and an even ace here. Is that right? No, that's not right. Oops. Nope. That's right. There we go. And there. And there. Not much here. Just a scanned newspaper clipping. But I think it's enough to tell you what you need to know. Father guilty of killing child. AP. Devin Tellis, 29, of Essex, Massachusetts, has pled guilty to multiple counts of murder and attempted murder of his twin infants. According to Essex police, Tellis was apprehended by security guards in the ICU at Addison Gilbert Hospital while attempting to suffocate one of the children, who was on life support. After his arrest, Tellis confessed to killing the other twin, who was in his care while the infant's mother, Celeste Tellus, remained hospitalized with serious complications following the problematic birth. Ben Silloway, Tellus's attorney, entered a plea of guilty by reason of insanity and has recommended that his client be remanded to the state hospital for the criminally insane. The surviving twin is reported to be in serious but stable condition and has been placed in protective custody pending an investigation. So, Devin Tellis, Jess's birth father, killed her son? Or killed his uh, son, I think. That's what it's saying. It doesn't say boy or girl, does it? Just other twin. Huh. But it killed uh, Jess's sibling. And Ben Silloway, the adoptive parent of Jess, was his lawyer. That could explain why he quit practicing. This is unbelievable. All of it. I had a twin, and my real father killed her? It's understandable why your parents would want to keep this from you. My father, Ben, he was Devin Tellis' lawyer. That's how they knew each other. But why, how was I adopted? What happened to my real mother? None of this is making any sense at all. I feel like I don't even know who I am. Aren't the only one that doesn't know. Because we're kind of left out in the dark. Anyway, we can look at the cards now. The Emperor represents Jess's father, Ben Stillaway. Ben has provided Jess with a safe and happy life, until now. Ben has always been willing to do anything for his daughter, but what's happening may be beyond his control. The Knight of Wands represents Merriman, 
the private investigator. Jess is drawn to his confidence and strength, but is he someone she can trust? The Five of Pentacles represents the Essex County Mental Health Facility where the old Dr. Giordano works. And with chapter two out of the way, it's a good time to cut the video as any. So I will see everyone next time for chapter three when we continue and hopefully get some answers instead of just more questions. So until then, take care folks. See you next time.